What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by once again. This is Arca coming at you with an IMBI update. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button so that we can get this information out to as many people out there who want to learn about the trade. Uh, with that said, let's begin. Okay, IMBI had a bit of a red day today. Now let's touch on let's touch on what we've been talking about for the you know since the last few uh, uh, analyses that we put up. We are still with uh, trending within a broadening descending wedge. This is a large trend reversal signal um, that we are on the daily chart here, and we can see that we've started this trend. Uh, let's see, August twenty sixth, twenty twenty two, and we are currently on uh, October so this has been a couple months long uh, based on raw price action what happened today was not uh, too big of a surprise whatsoever and the reason why I can say this is because there was a lot going against price action here uh, to the upside particularly uh, first of all we do have our 10-day simple moving average and our seven-day exponential moving average serving as a guide to the bottom this these are serving as resistance uh, second, we do have the not 236 at 52 cents right over here serving as a form of resistance as well. Um, not to mention, we have, let's see, if we have a one, two, yeah, so we have a one, two tests, three tests, and we know the golden rule of three. That would be the two tests to confirm the formation at all and uh, the third test would likely be failed in order for us to come and accumulate uh, touch the demand zone before we continue to the upside now we we are looking like we're doing that so far so now just just so you can uh, catch an idea over timing um, from this test to this test here let's just mark the time that it took for us to reach there Looks like it took us about 20 days to reach that area. Now, if we uh, if we measure from that from that day to where we are, we're looking at the 19th day right now. So I'm not trying to say that the 20th day is about to hit and we're going to take off to the moon. What I am saying is is that there is there is also the potential to where we we can you know try to touch or test the formation support one more time. Uh, I'm not suggesting that to be the case just yet for the fact that we did uh, close this candle as a, as, as a hammer candle at the, at the bottom of a, of a downtrend. Now, usually hammer candles present a bullish signal towards the upside when, when they do print. That means that, bull, that, that, means that the bulls are, are, are trying to gain control back or we're touching a pretty good area of a demand zone down here. Um, th th now based guys, please know that this is based on, on like what I said, like what I said, this is just raw price action, super discretionary, right? Let's go ahead and move on to the next chart and take a look at our bias and direction for the immediate short term. Let's start with the 30 minute RSI. Okay. So 30 minute RSI is showing that we are in the bear strength percentile. Now I, I know that some of you already know what I'm going to say here <laughs> as far as the RSI uh, setup, but I do have to say it for the newcomers, right? So this is a, uh, yeah, new listeners, new viewers. This is a regular RSI setup. You have the, you have the center at 50, you have the 70 and above as a overbought area and a 30 and below as you're oversold, right? So the only difference here is the the only excuse me the only difference here is that I have split the RSI into two sections. The bottom section being the bearish control zone and the top being the bullish control zone. Now both zones have been split into two uh, into two areas. The bottom half being uh, the the bull weakness percentile and the top half being the bull strength percentile. Similarly. More inversely, our bearish weakness percentile lands at the top half and the bottom half has the bearish, uh, I'm sorry, the bear uh, strength percentile. So just in case you guys uh, hear me talk about those references, you, you'll know what I'm saying, right? Okay, so we are, re we are currently within uh, the bear strength percentile here. Now our moving average is above us, which is pretty bearish and it is, con it, it is suggesting a continuation to the downside. However, there is an upside pivot here, so which could 
I mean, we this moving average coming down to these areas here could serve as a form of of a resistance. So it could be a guide to the bottom or to, to a continuation to the downside. Uh, that's the 30 minutes. So let's look at a, a shorter time frame. Usually I won't go anywhere, you know, past the 15 minute for an RSI. Um, okay, so this has an upside pivot and it looks like it may cross the moving average here. Now, we can't give this too much weight, first of all, because we're in a, we're in a micro time frame here. Second of all, because we're in, we're well within the, the bounds of uh, bear strength here. Uh, now let's move on to a higher term time frame. So this is going to be the buy hourly and the buy hourly we're, we're trading below the moving average, which is not good. Uh, we are also within the bear strength percentile here and it, it is an upside pivot. But however, please notice the please notice the angle on the pivot is not so strong. It's not so uh, like this here suggesting upside. Right. And being that the fact, you know, the fact that us sitting within the bear uh, strength uh, could just lead to some to some more downside. Let's look at the hourly. Hourly is the same situation, and the four hour is uh, has just stepped in into bear into bear strength. Now it is within the shallow areas of the bear strength, which could be likely for it to recover back. But like we like we said before, uh, we're trading. Uh, below the moving average and the moving average can actually be uh, can actually be a form of resistance for us to continue on to the downside. Uh, this is the six hour RSI and uh, this is suggesting a continuation to the to the downside. Now these are these carry more weight here and, and also within you know living within the bear strength percentile, we can give some weight to the six hour and possibly see uh, some continuation to the downside before immediate, the immediate short term upside, meaning that we can actually, you know, going back to our first uh, chart here, we can see a potential resistance range starting from, you know, considering our, our, our RSI suggestions, we can see a potential range of resistance from 5211 to about 5509 this could be this could be uh, maybe a maybe a wick above to test the 382 at 56 uh 5695 it could be 57 cents as well so as well so we can actually just make a quick adjustment here to this uh range of resistance so definitely from 52 to 56 cents could be an area of interest to open the short positions for the for the short sellers and uh, potentially opening up some long puts on this area to ride uh, either to the bottom of this uh, of this uh, formation support, and we've actually we've actually talked about uh, this area being somewhat of interest at the thirty eight cent level. If we do touch on this area, this would probably be short lived, and there could be a, a pretty. I I don't know that we can actually you know gradually land at this area this could potentially be one of those uh wick down situations similar to what wyckoff theory calls as a terminal shakeout or or uh, a spring of sorts so we could we could potentially see a quick touch of this area to to exit out a lot of retail uh you know to stop them out before an immediate recovery to continue on to the upside here uh please remember like we said the third test is is active right now and we are within the accumulation and consolidation period of that third test before we can move up to the fourth test breakout and test this resistance as a newly supported uh, as a newly converted uh, support uh let's go back to the rsi okay uh the, yeah we touched on the six hour let's look at the eight hour uh, the eight hours within the bear strength percentile suggesting upside, but the, the pivot is very, very weak and within the bear uh, strength percentile. So this is likely to to maybe fail in, in, in the shorter term. Uh, I do have a pretty interesting time frame here to, to present you guys. And uh, if, if you've been watching my Mullen videos, you'll notice that I have touched on bullish divergences in the 12 hour time frame and particularly the one from Mullen where we caught the we caught the 12 hour bullish divergence from 32 cents and now it's sitting at 50 something cents so exponential moves have have been made from 
uh, from bullish divergences in the in the higher term time frames, like a 12 hour. Uh, what I do have to mention here is that while we're looking at this bullish divergence, it is it is active, but I just don't like to see bullish divergences within these lower areas, especially in the oversold area. I usually like to see these up towards the towards this top here, you know, a good neutral zone so that we so that we can for sure make a, a serious thrust to the upside. Nonetheless, it is still bullish and it is, it's still suggesting some upside. Let's see if we can actually uh, narrow that look by by uh, moving on to a, a larger uh a larger chart and and then really seeing what that bullish divergence looks like so yeah this is the 12 hour guys and this could be playing out something like this right so we uh yeah we can make an adjustment to this as well so yeah we could be looking at we could be looking at a, at a potential third drive right now of bullish divergence, this being the first uh, drive of two. And this is the way I actually uh, chart you guys. This is the way I do it when I'm by myself. So you're looking at one drive and a second drive. And if this thing comes back up and then does this thing again to where test this line, it could be a third drive of bullish uh, divergence. And that can... That can really propel things to the upside. Third drives, anything above three drives, starting at three drives and above of, of divergences, that's usually pretty uh, a, pre a pretty good thing. So we're, we're experiencing a potential third drive right now. And uh, the problem is, is that we're within the bear strength percentile. We are trading above the moving average. Uh, you know, the, the, the RSI signal line is trading above the, the moving average. Um, the good thing is, is that the moving average is within the shallow areas of bear strength percentile, which means that we can be drawn into bear weakness. Um, but yeah, if we can gather more, uh, bullish drives, then this could be, a, a, a pretty explosive move. Now, uh, I'm not saying that this is the bottom. What I am saying is, is that there is the potential to where we can create that third drive by doing something like. So this is a 12 hour time frame so we'll do it at the next candle so even if we did this and you know our candle touched at this area here and we created the third drive being being even even down here like we at the critical levels of the bear uh, strength percentile this is still now three this is still bullish divergence so that we still have space for us to be able to still you know call uh, a bullish divergence here but this is of incredible importance uh particularly for price action for raw price action uh so let's go ahead and uh, look at the notes here and see what else we got i think we can move on to the next chart and take a look at some things here um okay so yeah these are this is the four hour chart uh we are looking at we are the, the, if if we if we do come down a bit more the, the, you know, I don't really like to call this formation a lot. I don't see it pan out too much, but psychology says that it could, uh, you know, play a factor into into some things. So th this could potentially be a double bottom. And uh, the, I mean, it, uh, the, those formations are usually without the, you know, with the exception of a triangle or, or a, sorry, a descending triangle or an ascending triangle. Uh, the, the, the other formations just don't have that high of a hit rate to call particularly. It's, it's just... I'm just noting it so that you guys can see that there is the potential of facing a double bottom. Double bottoms are are bullish, and they do present a reversal of trend as well. Uh, so, yeah, you guys, if you are looking for entry into IMBI or some type of uh, or some type of average down, uh, there a couple things to consider before we before we do that. We did print this hammer candle at the at at the bottom of a of a trend, signaling a potential reversal. Okay, so we could just start moving. This is an area. This is an area now that where we can start averaging down. Um, and now, with that said, I'm I'm actually not a financial advisor. I can't tell you to buy or I can't tell you to buy or sell any asset. Please take whatever I do say uh, in these videos and this content and the threads on Twitter or Discord here on YouTube as a form of entertainment. Please do your own DD. Talk to me. I want to be able to hear your your opinions on the analysis. 
and uh, we can we can all figure this out within a team. Please join the Discord, which is uh, an area where we like to share these strategies together, whether it be fundamental or technical or statistical. Please join, and we can uh, discuss these things further. But uh, that I'm thinking I'm thinking if we, if we do sell off, I, I would possibly start accumulating you know, within this area here. So I, I would, I would enter, I would enter a percentage here, uh, possibly put a, a buy limit for the uh, 44 98 for 45 cents or, or at the bottom of this candle, which could be 45 51, uh, for another entry. And then, uh, the third heaviest entry that I would have would potentially be at the 38, uh, 30, I would do probably 39 cents around here. Uh, so that you don't, uh, bank on reaching the absolute bottom right sometimes take profits come early or uh or inversely take profits come uh what i'm trying to say is that if your target was to sell at the 382 at precisely 56 whatever little increments that is it would highly be advised for you to like sell at this area here so that you can confirm that you are going to take profit and not get stuck trying to wait for this area when, in fact, people take profits early. But uh, anyway, you guys, that is my advice for IMBI. Uh, like I said, please reach out to any of the platforms. All the links are going to be below. But that is going to do it for the video tonight, you guys. And uh, I will catch you at the bell. Adios.